<laughs> yeah, we're back! Sorry for the long absence. I went to Australia to visit my family. It was the best. If you love your family, spend as much time with them as you can. It was lovely. All right, let's get back into it. Let's go 3D modeling. I was in the toilet the other day and I saw this. It was a cleverly designed door stop. So it did two functions. It was drilled into the, the door and it has a rubber head here that prevents it from hitting up against the wall too harshly. And it also had this little hook for hanging your coat like this on there. And uh, I thought that it was really neat and a simple design. It's prismatic. And I thought, oh, you know, who would like to design this? People on the channel, I think that they might. Uh, it's a really simple design and I thought it'd be a nice one to kick off the year with. Um, okay, so cool. Let's get to it. In this video, we're going to have a look at modeling this design in Fusion 360. We're going to take a bottom-up approach, which means that we are going to design each one of these components individually before placing them into an assembly. So here we have the completed model in Fusion 360. Uh, we've got two components. Uh, the first one is the aluminium body, which is complete with some countersunk holes for screwing into the door, and also a separate uh, component, which is a rubber body, which will be... Uh, fastened onto there with the screw thread lovely okay so it's going to be very straightforward we will go ahead and close that design and before we get started we're going to open up the uh the data panel and we're going to create the file uh for our design so navigate over to the folder that you want to save these files into so like that and then before we get started on the design we are going to save the file so we're going to call this bathroom door coat hook and then i'm going to say dash and i'm going to say body this is the the body of the coat hook and we'll say save and you can see that the file gets saved in the folder that we went to we will return to the data panel a bit later when we come back to to make the the rubber component cool all right so we'll close the data panel and let's go and make the design so we'll come along to uh in the solid tab of the design environment and we will click create sketch next we'll pick a plane onto which we're going to draw that sketch so we'll click this plane here the x y plane lovely now there's lots of approaches that we could take uh, to modeling the the profile of the hook but we are going to take a line approach and then use an offset so we'll start off by creating a line <clears throat> and we'll start off at the origin here and we'll come out 60 millimeters and click enter. Next, we'll come down and we'll create another epic line starting from the origin and coming down 40 millimeters. Next, we wanna capture the little hook at the bottom here. So we're going to make an arc. So we'll click create arc and we'll choose a three point arc. Tangent arc would probably be better, but let's just do three point arc for the moment. So to make a three point arc, we'll click the end of the line there another arbitrary line here a point here and then we'll just click it down and then hit escape now i want this arc to be tangential to this line here i want it to be nice and smooth so we are going to add in a constraint to do that we'll come along here to constraints and we'll find the tangent constraint and then we'll click the straight line and the arc lovely excellent good next what we'll do is we're going to create a line from the origin of the arc to the end. This is going to be a line of convenience uh, that'll allow us to describe the uh, the angle at which the arc terminates. So um, because it's not a real line, it's going to just be a construction line, we're going to select it and make it a construction. So you can click here, and then you can click line type construction. Or alternatively, you can hit X, and it'll make it dashed. There we go. Lovely. Okay, now we're going to use that straight line to define the angle at which the uh, the sweep will well that that arc will terminate. So we'll go ahead and we'll add in a dimension. We can do that by hitting D or alternatively come to create and hit sketch dimension, and then click the straight line and this line here, and we can define the angle between them. So we'll type in fifty two degrees. Lovely. Um, next, we'll use the dimension uh, to define the size of this arc. So we'll hit D again or alternatively create sketch dimension and we'll choose the rim of that arc and we'll say here it's going to be uh, 22 
millimeters. I didn't actually take time in the toilet to actually measure the thing. So a little bit of imagination is being used, but that's okay. That's what being an engineer is all about. So uh, let's go and we'll finish the top bit. Uh, we'll draw a line that will start at the point there and then it'll come up 14 millimeters. Good stuff. All right, now here's where we leverage laziness for the advantage of us. Okay, so we'll come along here and we'll click modify and then click offset. The shortcut is O. And what this allows us to do is select a chain of lines. So if chain selection is selected on, we can select the chain of lines. And then we can use this slider to drag outwardly or inwardly. So I approximate that it was about four millimeters thick. So we'll say negative four millimeters offset and hit enter. Great. And now we've got the uh, basically almost the, the profile complete. Um, it's still open though at the top here and at the bottom there. So we'll just go ahead and we'll close this off with some uh, choice lines there. One and two. Great. And you'll know that the profile is complete when it's uh, shaded in an, an enchanting blue like that. So lovely. <clears throat> Next, we'll go ahead and we'll click finish sketch. And what we'll do is we are going to extrude it into the third dimension. So we'll come along here to extrude. And it should pick up the map profile because it's the only profile that we had selected. And we can drag it out. Um, for the distance, we're going to go ahead and put 12 millimeters. Good stuff. Okay. Next, from memory, we have two counter ho uh, countersunk holes here. And we also have a threaded hole here for the doorstop. So what we're going to do is we are going to create sketch. And we're going to draw a sketch on that surface. So I maybe went a bit too fast. We'll say create sketch. And then create a sketch on this surface. And what we want to do is put down two points that are going to define the positions of these holes. So uh, there's a few ways of doing this. I find that the laziest way is to draw a point that's 10 millimeters down from there. So I draw a line. Add another one that is 10 millimeters up from that edge there. And we go. And we'll click finish sketch. And we're going to use the end of these lines as our points. Next, we'll come along and we'll say uh, create a hole. And now we've got this fancy dandy hole dialog. It's actually pretty comprehensive despite its uh, succinct size. Um, but here we can go ahead and we can pick this, uh, the points that we want to create our holes on. And as you can tell, these holes are a bit ambitious for the size of this. So we're going to reduce this diameter. And I'm going to approximate that it's about five millimeters in diameter. Next, what we want to do is define the extent. So at the moment, this is uh, at some arbitrary distance. What we're going to say is say extent, go to, and then we'll pick the back surface here. So no matter how thick this is, the hole will always go to the end. Next, we've got the ability to choose different hole types. So we'll come along here, we've got simple, counterbore, countersink. So if you click them, you can see what that looks like. Their counterbore has got a little shoulder on it, and the countersink has got a, uh, a little 45 degree chamfer on it. Um, so we'll go ahead and we're going to define the size of the counterbore. So we'll click, uh, say countersink, and we'll click the diameter and we'll type in eight millimeters. That looks better. Um, as for the hole tap type, uh, this is just a, right, a simple hole. Uh, for our screw to go through. We're going to create a tapped hole um, in very, very shortly. So once we're happy with our hole, we'll go ahead and we'll click OK. And there we've got our countersunk holes. Next, we'll go and we'll repeat the process. We're going to create a point on the middle here, and it's going to be a threaded hole. So we'll go ahead and we'll say create sketch. And what we're going to do is we are going to create a line that uh, bisects this face. Lovely. And next, what we'll do is we'll create a point. So we'll come along and click create point. And we'll click a point in the middle of that line there. There's a few ways of doing this, but that's the simplest way of getting the point in the middle. Next, we'll click create sketch. No, finish, finish sketch. Uh, and we'll click, say create hole. And next, we'll click that point. And this time we are going to do a simple hole type with a tap. 
since it's going to be threaded. And we are going to make it an isometric 5 millimeter hole, so M5 by 8 millimeters. You can play around with these dials if you're uh, you across the pond in America and you use uh, Imperial. That's okay. Uh, you can select them there. Uh, but we're happy with an M5 hole. So we'll click uh, uh, for the extent. We'll change it from distance to 2, just so that if we were to change the thickness of this part, it won't cause problems later. And we'll click OK. Lovely, lovely. OK. Um, there's just a few more things to add. There are some sharp edges, which I'm sure will be deadly dangerous for people's skin and clothes everywhere. So we're going to break off those edges with some fillets. Um, the hotkey for this is F, uh, but you can otherwise come to Modify and click Fillet. And now we can click our offending edges. So we'll click one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Cool. And we can click and drag using this little arrow. It's a bit sensitive. So um, we're going to go ahead and we'll add in a one millimeter fillet um, all around. There we go. And for good measure, we'll uh, also add in a tiny little fillet on the edges here just to deburr the thing. So we'll click these two edges here. Oh, there I used the hotkey F. Uh, and we'll go ahead and we will say fillet 0.25 millimeters. So just a little tiny fillet. Very good. Cool. So there is the body looking good, looking good. Okay, so let's go ahead and we are going to open up our data panel again. And we will click save. There's one last thing that we're going to do before we close the part. We'll come along to modify and we're going to specify a material. So we'll say modify physical material. And from the look of it, um, I guess that it was aluminium. It looked aluminium. Uh, so we'll come along here and say metal. And we'll find aluminium. I honestly didn't have my metallurgy kit on me, so I'm not sure what grade it is, but I'll say aluminium 6061. So we'll find, click and drag aluminium 6061 on our part. There we go. Lovely. And we'll go ahead and save that with Control S and click OK. All right, next we're going to do the rubber stop on the end, and this one's a lot easier. We'll go ahead and we'll click New Design. And again, before we get started, we'll go ahead and save it with the little diskette icon. And we'll say bathroom door coat hook. And we'll say stop. And we'll click save. Lovely. So this stop is just a little rubber bit at the end that you would have seen here. Okay. So let's go ahead and we are going to model that up. We'll go ahead and we'll say create sketch. And as before, we'll create a sketch on the vertical plane here, the X, Y plane. If you know how I know, uh, you can see X, Y, and Z on the view cube in the corner. So we'll go on the X, Y plane. And here we are going to draw a profile, which we are going to revolve uh, around an axis. So let's go ahead, we'll draw the central axis, and we'll say that this thing is eight millimeters long. And let's go ahead and we'll draw a... Um, now, I happen to know that this uh, rubber stop is 12 millimeters in diameter, so we will say 6 millimeters. Or if you're lazy like me, you'll say 12 divided by 2 as the dimension, which gives us 6. Um, very good. Uh, on the other end, we'll say uh, it happens to have a bit of a conical shape, so we'll say uh, five. Oh, so we'll say 11 over 2. And there we've got 5.5. And we'll close it off with a line there. Now, if you remember from the design, it looks like it's screwed in. So what we're going to do is we are going to provide a little space for it to go. Uh, we'll say, uh, we'll uh, put a line here, and we're going to say that it's um, 4.5 over 2. So we'll say 4.5 over 2. And we'll make it about halfway. So we'll mouse over the uh, midline there. And then we'll come up and create a little shoulder, maybe about one millimeter there. And bring it to the mouth. Now, you'll notice that this is blue because it's not formally constrained. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's halfway through. Uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this. Um, I'm just going to be lazy. I know that it's eight, uh, eight millimeters there. So we'll go ahead and say four millimeters. There we go. Lovely. Okay, so let's go ahead. We'll say finish sketch. And what we're going to do is we're going to revolve this profile here. That's it. So we'll click Create, Revolve, click the profile, 
for the axis, this is the axis around which it's rotating. We'll click select, and then we'll pick that axis there. Lovely. And it's uh, by default 360 degrees, which is a full revolution, which we're happy with. We'll click OK. And we'll finish this off by adding in some fillets. So let's go ahead and we'll hit F, or we'll click Modify and fill it. And then we'll pick these edges. One, two, three, four. Good stuff. And we'll say ah, da, 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 0 0.25 millimeters. Good. And click OK. Um, lastly, we want to assign the material rubber. So let's go ahead, we'll click Modify, and we'll say Physical Material. Eventually. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll go ahead and we will uh, close and we'll come to Plastic. And let's see if we can scroll down and find Rubber. There we go. And we'll say Rubber, Black. Click and drag it onto that part. Looking good. Okay, so we'll go ahead and we'll save that with the diskette or control S. And so now we've got the two parts. So we've got the uh, the hook body and the stop. Lastly, we're going to make an assembly. So we'll go and we'll make a new design. So we'll come along and click new design. And as before, we're going to go ahead and we'll say save bathroom door coat hook dash assembly. And here's where the data panel comes in super useful. We can click and drag those parts that we created earlier. So let's go ahead, we'll click uh, the body and we'll drag it into the assembly. There we go. Lovely. Um, and it allows us to position it in space, but uh, because there's nothing there, it's just relative to nothing. So we'll just go ahead and say, okay. Now, uh, don't do this, but if you click and drag it, you'll find that it moves around, which is not very good. Um, so if you accidentally do click and drag it around, you can go ahead and click revert position here at the top right. What we want to do first, though, is select the part in the tree, right click it, and click ground. This will prevent it from moving around. Good stuff. Next, what we want to do is click and drag the, uh, the stop into the design. Now, strictly speaking, it doesn't really matter where it comes in or the orientation that it comes in because we're going to add in a joint. Um, but we'll just go ahead and plunk it in. And now what we're going to do is we are going to assemble it. So we'll go ahead and click Assemble and click Joint. And here we are going to select the back end of the stop. So if you if you find you hover your mouse over the, the flat face of the stop and hold down Control, your mouse... Uh, will uh, snap to the point of interest, so the, the center of the axis of rotation. Next, we'll go ahead and we'll click, we'll do the same thing onto this face, we'll hold down control, and we'll pick that center point there. Or better yet, click the barrel, and then click that point there. And if everything worked out nicely, it will create a rigid joint in there. If you find that it's moving around like something like this, or something like this, like craziness, all you need to do is come to the motion tab, and click uh, type rigid good stuff and click OK and then we'll hide our joints Ta -da! so that's the design I saw it on the back of a toilet stall door and now it's in your computer screen and you can practice doing it I know that it's a bit of a simple design but I find that if you do little things every day your fundamentals become really really strong so I'm gonna make another video now it's going to do the same thing in inventor and uh, I hope to see you there but if not I'll see you next time bye